By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing with my Tron deck and I am playing against Alna who is playing with a reanimator deck. Now I don't play against these decks uh, every day so this is going to be a treat. And there I start with a Plains basic land passing turn. There we go, that's a much better start for the reanimator player there, having that mox. Now I'm playing my dual land passing turn. And there is the Bazaar of Baghdad. Of course, an important component in a reanimator deck because it allows you to draw two cards and then discard three. And look at what he's doing. He's discarding. Uh, oh, and I've got a disenchant there to take away his anime dead. But what I wanted to say is discarding three strong creatures, allowing him to play an anime dead, in this case on a Sangir Vampire, but I was able to disenchant. And there I go with a Library of Alexandria, but I don't believe I have seven cards in hand. Also playing that disenchant. Um, and being on the plane myself, so I'll, I'll probably have to wait. And that means if I choose to do that, that means I'm giving Anna some time. And again, he's activating that bazaar, and that's pretty scary for me because he can now start filling his graveyard with creatures as he is doing right now. Um, and then maybe playing All Hallows Eve, which is a card that says in two turns from now during your upkeep, all the creatures from all graveyards return to play. Uh, to play. So hopefully we'll see that later in the game. It's a very cool card. And you can see Anna really working that uh, reanimator. It is giving me some time to, uh, though to wait until my uh, library gets activated. And there is a Dark Ritual into a Juzam Jin. So that's a 5-5. Five, five. That means I've got to do something. Well, I'm playing with white, so probably have a sword. So okay, even better, I have a Mace of If. So that means that Anna will take the damage from his Juzam and I, I can just simply send it back. It's walking in a circle in the maze, and it's returning. And then it's my go again, and I have the library activated now. So that's also good. That, that is going to give me some card advantage. And you see me activating it here, going to eight cards in hand. But now I'll have to play something or discard. I guess, okay, I am sourcing um, the Juzam Jin because I didn't want to discard. The nice thing here is that the Sword Supplies here removes the creature from the game, uh, meaning that um, when he plays an All uh, Hallows Eve, it won't return to the game. So that's, uh, that's a nice advantage for me. And I'm sure Anna is also playing with four Sword Supplies here for that exact reason. Tapping six, got to be a trike, exactly. Triskelion here on the board, that's a four, four. Uh, actually a one, one with three plus one, plus one counters, and you can shoot the counters off and it deals one damage at a time. So those are the robot arms that you see on the art. And there is a Chaos Orb. Oh, I believe he's probably going to flip on that maze. And I think playing out that Swords on the Juzum Jin was a little bit too hasty. Um, I should have just kept sending the Juzam back into the maze. I'm drawing card number eight here. I mean, that library is doing great work, giving me enough cards. And I'm attacking, I don't mind trading against the angel. And I'm putting some pressure on the board now, playing a Suchi. And there is the flip, and then there is a disenchant. So that's kind of the basic play here, especially when you play against white and you have an orb, you kind of know, okay, there is a pretty big chance then I'm playing my orb and that my player has a disenchant in hand. That's one of the reasons personally why I like to just play a Chaos Orb and activate it immediately. So that the player has no time to kind of come up with, uh, with a tactic against it. I want to give my player uh, the least of information as possible. On the other hand, playing a Chaos Orb, people have told me that also has a psychological effect. Anyway, back to the game. I'm, I'm attacking now with the Suchi and a Trike. He chooses to trade. I, I don't mind having no flyers in my deck, and I'm hitting him for four with my Suchi, playing another Suchi. I really have pressure on the board here. And there's the All Hollow Hello's Eve. So that's a big problem for me. So I have to see if I can kill um, Anna there before this All Hallows Eve triggers. So during the upkeep, 
a counter is removed and when there are no counters on there anymore all the creatures from all the graveyards come back to play so that's also my graveyard but i only have one triskelion in my graveyard very curious to see how this is going to end i mean i have not on 15 i have two sweet cheese in place so i can hit him for eight here drawing an extra card so i think it's a too little too late for Anna, but who knows what else he has Um, I don't have Tron yet. I have two mines here and a power plant. Oh, I decide not to play that mine, I guess. And uh, I'm playing a Winter Orb instead. I just want to lock my opponent. And there is a recall. That's nice. That's always the blue power that can kind of get you back into a game. But I think what he needs here is a balance. And the balance is already in his graveyard. And as you can see, he's discarding some more creatures there. I think I saw Sarah. There's an animate dead. That can buy him that extra turn because all he needs is one more turn. So this is very interesting. He just needs one more turn. He's on survival mode now. He doesn't, he doesn't care if his, um, if his angel dies here. That's absolutely not of any importance. He just wants to survive one more round. And I, I have to attack with both. Of course he blocks. Uh, oh, and mine actually does, doesn't die because there's a minus one, uh, minus zero counter from the anime debt. So that means the angels hit three, four. And there's a fireball and that's the end of the game. And I actually only play with one fireball and I guess I'm telling him that now. So this first game I've won, I was on this clock. I had to kill him before the All Hallows Eve would trigger. But what a beautiful deck to play against. Let's continue to game number two. Game number two is on the, on the play, and let's see, uh, let's see if we can see some sideboard tech. Wow, that's a great start from Anna here with the Mox Sapphire and the Lotus into a Wheel of Fortune, and this is a perfect start for a reanimator deck because you want to fill your graveyard with creatures. Well, I can already see a Suchi and a, um, a Vampire there on the side of Anna, and then he's also playing a Recall. This is insane, and it's still his first turn. Playing two more mocks in there. And will he finally pass on the turn? No, he's not. He's tapping. No, he's not. Yes, he's playing a Bizarre of Baghdad. Activating it, drawing two cards. And have, he, now he has to discard three. But in a reanimator deck, that's exactly what you want to do. And he's piling up some more creatures. At least one there. And then he's playing a Soaring. Playing, this is just crazy. Playing a Sangir Vampire my goodness so this is just my first turn just to clarify um anna has done all this in turn number one and then i play a strip mine i strip his bazaar of baghdad i think it's a it's the case of too little too late because his graveyard is already filled with creatures hitting me for four there with the sangir vampire i'm going down to 16. and what can i do and he's checking his graveyard and he's playing a Demonic Tutor. And is he going to look up that All Hallows Eve? Because that would make sense here. I mean, that's what you want to do with this deck. And his, his graveyard is full of creatures. Um, I believe he's past turn. I'm playing a Library of Alexandria. So I'm, I've drawn that one again. It really helped me out in the first game. Passing turn now. Taking another hit. Going to 12, he's playing a Sarah Angel, so that's even more trouble for me. Activating that library at the end of turn, drawing a planes, hopefully having a swords here to deal with some of the pressure. And I do, a balance would have, well, been better. It goes to his graveyard and he plays with N4 anime deaths and All Hallows Eve. So anyway, I'm down to eight and there's the All Hallows Eve. Oh my goodness. At least I also have some creatures in my graveyard, I believe from that Wheel of Fortune that he played first turn. Activating that library end of turn again, so that means I have nine cards in hand. So card-wise I can't complain, but I'm already on eight. And the library is much better from a controlling position. Playing a Maze of If, discarding there that trike, knowing that the All Hallows Eve is going to trigger, and that will give me back my trike. And I, th I believe I have another Triskelion in my graveyard as well, so that would mean two Triskelions coming back. Um, he's attacking, activating the Maze, so at least this is the, a turn where I don't get any damage, but look at that, another Bazaar of Baghdad, and he's activating it straight away. 
And I can't really see what he's putting in his graveyard, but his hand is empty. He probably says that with a smile on his face, because he knows the All Hallows Eve is going to trigger, and that graveyard is full of nasty creatures that I am going to deal have to deal with next turn. But this is going to be a very interesting board state. Um, tapping, what am I going to play there for two? AK Orb. okay. Interesting choice here, because remember that usually that I said in the, in the first game that usually I only want to play a Chaos Orb if I can activate it straight away. I guess this is a, a different situation here because now I can use the Chaos Orb. Anyway, look at the creatures coming back onto the battlefield. This is just beautiful. We've got two trikes on my side, but look at Ana's side. It's just insane. There's a Juzem Jin. There are two Sangir Vampires, two Sujis, and a Sarah Angel. I just need to, I need a balance and then just kill my own Triskelions and play a balance. Am I, oh, I just thought a white and colorless, maybe I was going to play a balance. Playing a disenchant on one of the Suchis, so I have to really clean up shop now because I'm only on eight life. Uh, I have that maze, of course, for one of the flyers. I can kill one of his creatures using the tri counters. I can use um, my Chaos Sarp. I'm flipping it here, hoping to hit the Sarah Angel. Let's see if I succeed. And I've put it in slow mo. I'm trying to. To put all the flips in, in slow motion, it's still not very clear though, the flip, but um, seems like I've hit the angel, so the angel's out of the game. So that means I've dealt with the Suchi and an angel, and I still have a Maze of If, and I can deal with one other creature. Or there's a Disenchant on the trike, meaning he's forcing me to take action now, and obviously I'm going to remove the counters from the trike um, to kill one of the flyers, um, taking out down a Sangir Vampire. And now he's going full force, so I have to chum block. And I guess the Jews M Jin sending back his Sangir, taking four damage and sending two damage to Anna, which doesn't really matter that much. Um, and now what can I do? So sorting out my mana there. How can I survive this? I'm on four life. I need a balance. Tapping a white, tapping a colorless, give me a balance. No, there's a disenchant, so I'm taking one of the Suchis away. I still have that maze for the flyer. This is difficult. I, I believe I have eight cards in hand, so to activate my library, I have to play out a land. And I think I'm pointing out now, what if I, yes, and I draw a maze of if, but I can't play it anymore. Um, because, you know, I had to play a land to get to seven and activate my library. So unfortunately, um, I'm not going to win this one, but I do think um, it's it's a fair win for Anna because what a deck. Uh, that game was just insane. And we are going to game number three. So curious to see who's going to win this matchup. The final game with me on the play. So it's a 1-1 one, one at the moment. So whoever wins this one wins this matchup. Uh, but what a great deck, that reanimator deck. It's just beautiful. I'm playing a plateau passing turn. There's the Scrubland. And I'm playing a Relic Berry. I actually haven't seen any Parfait Tricks from my deck in these last two games. So maybe I can get that up and running in this third decisive game. And Anna is thinking already in turn number two. Is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Maybe he's... Ooh, there it is. I guess it's a bad thing because that's a dark ritual into a Jews M Jin. So that's a 5-5 five, five Arabian Night powerhouse that I have to deal with. And playing a Winter Orb. Okay. There's the Parfait combo, I guess. Taking a damage. And he's attacking. And I go down to 15. I was hoping, obviously, for Swords. It's not there. He has a Bazaar of Baghdad activating it and filling his graveyard again. Look at that. A Juzum Jin, a Suchi, and a Sangir Vampire. And they're using an Animate that. This is looking bad for me. I'm phasing a 3-4 and a 5-5. Five, five. I do have a Swords here. Interesting that I didn't use that Swords on his Juzam. Maybe I had other plans for that Juzam Jin or half still because it's still on the board. Oh, now that makes sense. I am playing a city in a bottle, of course, and that's great here because it takes care of his Jews and Jins, it takes care of his Bazaar of Baghdads. 
and this is just a very powerful card. So that's some sideboard tech. I actually play one main board and one in the sideboard. This one is signed by uh, David Howell, who used to be the only point of customer service at Magic the Gathering at a certain point. I believe it was 1995. So if you would send an email to Wizards of the Coast, he would be the one to respond to your emails. But that's a different story. If you'd like to know more about that story, by the way, you can click on the link that's on the screen right now. Uh, but let's continue looking at the match. And I'm playing a Presence of the Master. And this is an absolute powerhouse. Oh, and he has a disenchant. Oh, but he's disenchanting my Winter Orb. Interesting. Presence of the Master says, counter every other enchantment that comes into play. So meaning he cannot play his Animate Deads anymore. So I've kind of got him on a lock right now with that city in a bottle and that um, presence of the master. And I'm tapping down his Mox Ruby just for what it's worth. Deny him of his red mana. I haven't seen a single red spell, but still, you know, it's the right thing to do. And in the meantime, uh, attacking him with the uh, trike. And he's on 18 at the moment. I'm still on 15. And this is great. The presence of the master denies him from playing any anime deads. And he cannot play that uh, City of Brass. I wonder if we noticed that or if we've made a mistake here. I believe we've made a mistake here because obviously with a City in a Bottle in play, he's not able to play that City of Brass. Okay, and I'm pointing it out right now. And he's taking it back. Okay, so that's a good thing because you, you forget about that sometimes. I even, I've even played the Library of Alexandria myself while having my own City in a Bottle in play, which obviously is impossible. Um, but what I wanted to say is City in a Bottle is denying a lot of cards, including that very important um, Baghdad land card. And that Presence of the Master is denying Honor from playing any anime debts. But still, he's, he's not giving up the fight, and there's a Swords over his Angel. Bringing him back to 10 life and swinging in so he lost that life gain already. Trying to deny his mana, obviously, knowing that he cannot play those cities. So I'm stripping one of his scrub lands, attacking him again, bringing him to two, and then taking the counters off. And I've won this third uh, decisive game that went pretty fast. And he's showing me his hand. He was just, he didn't have enough mana. And I think that Sadie in a bottle. Um, just just killed him, just killed him. He needed a disenchant, but he also needed a disenchant for that Winter Orb. I mean, what can he do? Uh, thank you, Anna, uh, for letting me play against you. What an amazing deck you have, and I know you have more interesting builds, so I'm looking forward to play against you in the future. If you'd like to see more games, you can click on the link that's appearing right now to see some more old-school magic. Um, thank you for watching. And see you next time at Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic.